It's an ordinary day on planet Earth. Well, on one side, at least. At the brink of dawn, the planet's inhabitants spring to life. The species of the Earth has a natural ranking system. It's either hunt or be hunted. But one species has managed to stand above the rest. With their fierce intelligence, they have become the rulers of this planet. A species with nothing to fear but their own. Humans. Unstoppable killing machines. Hmm, marvelous. Humans have existed for quite some time. The very first humans began to emerge around 6 million years ago on the continent now known as Africa. These early humans looked more like apes, except now they could walk on two legs instead of four. This was a crucial step for human evolution as we now had two spare hands we could freely use for other purposes. Over millions of years, humans continued to evolve in Africa and species like Neanderthals, Homo erectus and of course Homo sapiens flourished. Between 60 to 80,000 years ago, Homo sapiens began migrating away from Africa and they are now the only surviving species of the genus Homo. Blood. Humans have lots of it. In fact, if you were to take the blood vessels out of a human body, stretch them out into one single long tube, it would kill that person. That tube would also be 160,000 kilometers long. The lungs are quite enormous as well, because the inside of a human lung have some extremely complex features. Combined, these features give the human lung an internal surface area of roughly 70 square meters, about the size of half a tennis court. This would also kill the human. Carl Sagan once said, and I quote, We are made of star stuff. And while it sounds like something poetic, it's actually true. The elements that make up our bodies came from exploding stars or supernovas. But how much of our bodies are made of stardust? The average human body contains 7 octillion atoms. That's a 7 with 27 zeros. Now to figure this out, we need to go back to the very beginning. The Big Bang. To be completely honest though, we don't actually know how the universe began, or if it had a beginning at all. But for the sake of simplicity and the fact that it is the most accepted theory, let's go with the Big Bang. It goes like this. Not long after the universe came to be, subatomic particles assembled into hydrogen and helium, the two simplest forms of atoms. Once enough time had passed, these two elements clumped together and the first ever stars were born. All the other heavier elements, like the iron in your blood, came from these stars. So all we really need to do is figure out how much hydrogen and helium our bodies contain and then subtract that from 7 octillion. Turns out that we basically have no helium in our bodies and roughly 4.7 octillion hydrogen atoms. So 7 minus 4.7 gives us 2.3 octillion atoms that came from the stars. In other words, humans are a little more than 30% stardust. Until life is found elsewhere, humanity is the most intelligent civilization in the known universe. We have come a long way and our progress and achievements continue at an ever-increasing rate. But in the beginning, progress was very slow. The use of stone tools first emerged around 2.5 million years ago and the first evidence of controlled fire dates back to 400,000 years ago. Compare that to more recent events and it's a completely different story. Only in the last 5,000 years or so, humans went from the invention of written language to standing on the moon. This should give you an idea of how important this invention really was. You could now write down your ideas, your knowledge, your wisdom, and future generations could become just as wise in a fraction of the time simply by reading. Basically, humans now had the option to save and load whenever they wanted. 
Exercise is a crucial activity for humans to stay healthy. Usually, the stronger you are, the better you will feel. To build muscle mass or to get fit, you repeat a certain motion over and over again to increase your strength. The general idea is that you have to move around. Or do you? A study from 2007 tested three groups of people for two weeks. The first group did nothing outside of their usual routine. The second group exercised one specific muscle three times a week. Now the third group were given instructions to only imagine doing the same type of exercise as the second group three times a week. The control group who didn't do anything saw no difference. The second group who exercised saw 28% increase in strength, no surprises there. But the third group who only imagined exercising saw 24% gain in strength, almost as much as the group who actually worked out. How or why this works, we don't really know. 15% of people are missing the muscle named palmaris lungus. To see if you have it, stretch out your hand and touch your pinky with your thumb. Now by flexing the wrist, you should see a thin muscle right in the middle like this. If it's not there, you're one of the 15%. When we think of the fastest creatures on the planet, humans usually aren't very high up on that list. But when it comes to efficiency and endurance, it's a different story. In fact, over long distances, humans can outrun nearly every other animal on the planet. Our anatomy suggests that millions of years ago, running prey to death was a tactic used by primitive man to survive on the African savanna. There are many reasons why we are such good long-distance runners. For example, our bodies can sweat to regulate temperature, which means we can maintain a faster pace for far longer. Many animals simply can't do that. So once their internal temperature reaches a certain point, they are forced to stop or at least slow down. We can also breathe at a very fast pace compared to many other animals. Basically, human bodies are finely tuned running machines. Uh, w well, some human bodies. In the same way that fireflies and deep-sea animals glow to illuminate their surroundings and to attract possible mates, humans also glow in the dark. Human bioluminescence is a side effect of chemical and metabolic reactions within our bodies. In fact, all animals emit a small amount of light as a result of this. But the light we emit is a thousand times weaker than what the human eye can perceive. Throughout history, humans have been standing up. Um, let me explain. We began as hunters and gatherers. We were constantly on our feet. It was necessary to our survival and everyday tasks. We simply couldn't afford to sit around watching YouTube videos about the dangers of sitting. In essence, we only sat down if we needed to rest and or eat. But as technology progressed, we became lazy. We started sitting down a lot more. Take myself as an example. Both my job and many of my hobbies require me to sit down for entire days on end. In my defense though, I am doing other things to counteract the negativities of sitting. Or so I thought. Turns out that sitting down is a serious risk to your health, despite of how much you work out or try to move around. The benefits of exercise are heavily outweighed by the negative effects of sitting. It makes you fat, increase the risk of heart-related diseases, higher risk of diabetes, gives you severe back and neck problems, and makes your bones a lot weaker, especially in your legs as they are not used at all when you're sitting. But the most alarming fact is that it significantly lowers your life expectancy. A study that was conducted over an 8-year period reveals that if you're sitting down more than 7 hours per day, you have a 61% higher risk of dying compared to people who sit less than 2 hours per day. Researchers say that the only thing you can do to counteract this is by not sitting. Just working out on the side isn't enough. It's the fact that you're sitting down at all that slowly kills you. Brought to you by someone who definitely didn't spend the entire time of making this video sitting down. From out here, the planet looks peaceful. 
This massive sphere is slowly spinning, providing everything we need to survive and more. It feels surreal to think that throughout history, this was everything. This planet was our universe. Beyond the sky was just as inconceivable to them as beyond the universe is to us. It almost looks indestructible. Surely nothing as tiny as a human could possibly have any effect on this grand planet we call home. For the past 40 years, the Earth has lost half of its wildlife. Meanwhile, the human population has gone from just under 4 billion to 7.2 billion. If this can't convince us that there's something wrong with the way we live, it makes you wonder if anything can. But let's keep going. Forests cover 31% of the land area on this planet. They produce vital oxygen and provide homes for millions of unique and exotic animals. Obviously, we need to get rid of that. So far, we managed to cut down half of the forests around the world, and we're only getting better and more efficient at it. In other words, we are winning. Wow, winning. We are also winning against the climate. Take this nice illustration, for example. Dark blue indicates areas cool than average, and yellow and red indicates how much we are winning. The list could go on for a while, and frankly, it just gets worse. Water pollution, air pollution, land pollution, and as I've previously talked about, we are turning our oceans into acid through a process called ocean acidification. But the worst part of all of this is why we are doing it and who it benefits. We don't really need more of anything. There's enough for everyone to survive and live fairly comfortable lives. In fact, just for demonstration, you could fit the entire human population into the state of Texas. The problem is our greed. We want more. Who wants to survive and just live when you can have more than that? It has been estimated that the average American lifestyle requires 24 acres of land. If this was divided equally among everyone, we would need 10 planets. Essentially, we are destroying the only planet we have just because surviving is boring and the short-term goal of getting what we want now is a lot more important than any long-term side effects. Nothing makes this more clear than this. The richest 1,000 individuals in the world now control as much wealth as the poorest 2.5 billion people on the planet. By 2016, the wealthiest 1% would have more than the rest of the entire population combined. Surely, nothing as tiny as a human could possibly have any effect on this grand planet we call home.